funny fights and wild adventures while chasing winnings in the movie Jackpot, you're watching Flashback Recap. Let's go! In the future, a new law has been enacted. If you manage to kill the winner of the jackpot before they claim their prize, you become the legal owner of the winnings. There's just one rule, no bullets. Los Angeles 2030. Sean, the lucky holder of a winning ticket, is desperately trying to escape from a frenzied crowd. He jumps from a parking garage onto a nearby street but finds more people waiting for him there. Only his combat skills allow him to survive and escape. Sean breaks into a stranger's home, but luck isn't on his side. The woman recognizes him, kills him, and takes the winnings for herself. Sometime later, a TV crew led by Johnny arrives to deliver the highly anticipated prize ticket. There are only 18 hours left until the next drawing. Katie, riding on a bus, sees an advertisement for a security agency that guarantees safety for jackpot winners. She recently arrived in the country and knows nothing about the lottery, so she doesn't understand why people on the streets are acting so strangely. Meanwhile, Noel is in his garage creating weapons. He runs his own agency that offers protection to winners for a hefty fee. Katie, however, is quite poor and is forced to live with Shady. Their conversation is interrupted by a guy named DJ who brings news that today's jackpot is breaking all records, a whopping $3 billion. The next morning, Noel wakes up to the sound of a sewer backup. Despite the chaos, he makes it to a job interview where he impulsively grabs a lottery card and registers as a new player. As soon as she leaves the office, an announcement is sent out revealing the new winner. It's Katie. Chaos ensues as the other contestants instantly try to kill her. Since Katie knows nothing about how the lottery works, she tries to calm the other women down. But when reasoning fails, she decides to hide in a martial arts studio. Everyone there immediately recognizes her and the instructor commands them not to touch her as the prize will be his. Anyone who disobeys is threatened with serious injury. Just as a man grabs Katie, Noel bursts into the building. Shaking off the dust, he switches to combat mode and rescues Katie, offering her a deal, 10% of the prize money in exchange for his protection. While she hesitates, he sweetens the offer by promising five free protections, with all subsequent ones costing another 10%. Katie signs the contract and they enter into a mutual business relationship. To ensure her safety, Noel ties Katie to himself as they fend off anyone trying to approach. A local fixer bursts into the office but retreats when he sees Noel. Uh, when the chaos subsides, Noel helps the injured lie on their sides, insisting that no one should die. He explains that in 14 minutes, a drone will reveal Katie's location, further explaining the lottery rules. Acting quickly, he gets Katie into a car and speeds away from the enraged crowd as notifications about the winner flood the city. The populace has six hours to kill the winner, so everyone abandons their jobs, having turned this place into chaos for the last few years. Katie asks if she can forfeit the winnings, and Noel explains that it's possible. She just has to leave the city, though no one has ever done it. A few minutes later, bikers attack them. Katie scrambles into the car, forcing Noel to climb into the back seat. To protect her, he puts a helmet on Katie and triggers an emergency ejection, but the car can't withstand the chase and breaks down. Police officers spot them and Katie is relieved, thinking she's saved, but Noel reminds her that the law doesn't apply to cops. An officer pulls out a taser and fires, but Noel grabs the wires and beats the officers down. Taking advantage of the distraction, 
Katie runs away. On the street, Pinky Poo Poo notices her and Katie tries to hide her face with a brochure. However, she didn't consider that the drone would display her exact location on the screen. A museum guard approaches, reassuring her not to be afraid. He promises to drive off her pursuers and she can hide in the building. Katie tries to figure out where the nearest exit from the city is, but is interrupted by a call from Shady, who claims he's trying to help her. Katie tries to figure out the nearest exit from the city, but her call with Shady is interrupted when Pinky Poo Poo reveals that Katie is actually still at home. Shady knocks out the museum guard and enters the building. He quickly finds Katie, who fights back with anything she can get her hands on, even using a doll's head. The fight moves into another room where Shady pulls out an axe and throws it at Katie, but it turns out to be a fake. A tour guide immediately recognizes Katie and everyone rushes in to kill her. Just in time, Noel arrives and saves her once again. Even now, Katie still doesn't fully trust him, thinking that if he helps her leave the city, he won't get anything in return. Wouldn't it be easier for him just to kill her? Kelly, a hitman known as Chica, forces Noel to take the cat into a safe room before knocking him out. The crowd tries to force their way in, but Noel manages to shoot a dart. Katie believes the dart was aimed at her, though Noel denies it. Katie still doesn't trust him and aims her weapon at him. Sitting beside her, Noel opens up about his life and a small Oscar statue falls out of Katie's pocket, catching his attention. Katie admits she only decided to become an actress because of her mother, who loved watching movies. Her mother knew Hollywood was a dirty place and gave Katie a charm before passing away. When Katie was a child, she was very famous and made a lot of money but her father stole everything and disappeared. Noel's empathy and his story make Katie start to trust him, and she gives him her weapon. Noel tells her that protecting others has become valuable to him because of his past. Meanwhile, Shady comes up with a plan to throw Kelly into a pool and force her to reveal the bunker code, which was not part of Noel's original plan. Desperate for help, Noel calls Lewis for an emergency phone hack. Phones in the vicinity start exploding, causing chaos and while everyone is distracted trying to put out the fires, Katie and Noel slip away unnoticed. Ever the good Samaritan, Noel helps a man put out the flames on his body. But as they head outside, they are met by agents from the security agency that Noel had called in advance. The agents warn Noel not to approach Katie, but she screams that she won't go anywhere without him, forcing them to allow him to ride with her. Katie asks Noel if he's one of them, and he explains that he's a freelancer who simply requested their help. The guard jests at Noel, saying that with them around, Katie is now truly safe. They eventually arrive at a heavily guarded base surrounded by high fences. Katie points out that weapons are forbidden, but the guard explains they use rubber bullets, which skirts the regulations. Lewis, the agency leader, comes out and introduces himself as Katie's fan, praising her for surviving several hours without any help, something most people wouldn't have managed for more than 15 minutes. Lewis tries to belittle Noel, but Katie stands up for him, reminding everyone that Noel was the one who saved her life long before the agency got involved. Due to the phone attack, Katie lost her phone, so Lewis gives her a replacement placement agency phone. With only four hours left until the end of the lottery, Lewis shows Katie a board displaying all the surviving participants. If she signs the document, her face will be added to the board. Katie agrees to sign, but only on the condition that Noel gets a share of the winnings for protecting her. Reluctantly, Lewis agrees, and Katie signs the document. Meanwhile, the crowd surrounds the building, but Lewis reassures them that the base is equipped with underground tunnels leading to a bunker. 
However, before Katie can escape, she must undergo a medical examination. During the wait, Noel reveals that he and Lewis used to work together as mercenaries tasked with killing criminals, but they later found out that they weren't told the truth and some of their targets were innocent civilians. The guilt of taking innocent lives still haunts Noel, and he now donates part of his earnings to the families of the victims. Their conversation is interrupted when a worker from the agency arrives with a device that can project fake faces. Noel finds the technology incredibly expensive and wonders how Lewis's firm can maintain such high costs while only taking 30% of the winnings, especially since as Noel initiates the self driving cars, Lewis realizes that Katie is hiding in one of them. The agency staff tries to track her phone, but Katie cleverly disables the location services. She takes manual control of the car, and the agency immediately notices. Lewis calls Katie, hinting that if she doesn't turn the car around, Noel will die. Noel urges her to keep going and escape the city, but Lewis shoots Noel, forcing Katie to turn back, unwilling to let Noel die. Their rendezvous is set at an old theater. At the theater, Lewis confesses that when they were mercenaries, he knew exactly who they were killing but didn't care because of the enormous profits they made. You killed our team for money, Katie accuses him. Exactly, Lewis replies. It's just business. Armed with a gun, Katie enters the building and threatens to end her own life if Lewis doesn't release Noel. Lewis dismisses her threat, confident that he can cover up her death as just another casualty even without leaving any evidence behind. To counter this, Katie starts live streaming, making sure that everything is broadcasted online. As Katie gets too close, she trips Lewis, causing his phone to fall and revealing her exact location to everyone watching. While Katie fights off Lewis and his men, Noel manages to free himself and starts spinning around like a ninja turtle, taking down Lewis. He yells at Katie to run, but Shady blocks her path. Fortunately, Shady is easily knocked out with a single punch. Noel shouts that only a couple of minutes remain, and Katie scrambles onto a rocket platform to escape. Noel tries to hold off the attackers, but they overwhelm him. Agents subdue Noel, allowing Lewis to continue pursuing Katie. Just in time, Katie manages to pull the pin from a grenade, sending Lewis to his demise. At that exact moment, the game ends and Katie is declared the final winner. Grateful for Noel's help, Katie promises to give him 50% of the winnings. The film concludes with a scene showing Katie and Noel buying Lewis's company, but they refuse to charge for protection services. They also establish multiple charitable organizations, dedicating their efforts to making the world a better place.